Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Russia again backs India's permanent membership in UN Security Council. Six Pakistanis, one Afghan soldier killed in cross-border clash. PM Shehbaz terms incident unfortunate. And Bangladesh opposition party lawmakers resigned day after massive anti-government rally. And now for all the details, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has once again backed India's bid for permanent membership in the UN Security Council, noting that the largest democracy has added great value to the Council. This comes as India's current two-year term as a non-permanent member of the Security Council will end in December. India is currently presiding over the 15-nation Council. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has once again backed India for permanent membership at the United Nations Security Council, stating that New Delhi has added value to the Council with its stance on global and regional issues. Lavrov made the remarks while responding to media queries at the Premakov Readings International Forum in Moscow on December 7. Lavrov said India is currently one of the leading countries in terms of economic growth, maybe even the leader and has vast diplomatic experience in settling various kinds of problems, as well as has authority and has a reputation in its region. India is a country that not only aspires to be, but is at the essence of the forming of a multipolar world, as one of its most important poles, he said. Previously, while addressing the UN General Assembly in September, Lavrov had said, India and Brazil in particular are key international actors and should be counted for permanent membership in the Council. Among the five permanent members of the 15-nation Council, the US, UK, France and Russia have supported a permanent seat for India in the UN body. India's current two-year term as a non-permanent member of the Security Council will end in December. India is currently presiding over the 15-nation Council. And India's financial capital, Mumbai's tryst with poor air quality seems never ending as the city on Monday saw an air quality index of 245. The situation has become a matter of concern for the residents who are complaining of breathing issues. Mumbai last week also surpassed New Delhi at least twice with AQI hovering over 300. The Air Quality Index AQI in India's financial capital Mumbai on Monday morning was recorded at 245, which is classified in the poor category of air pollution. The city last week surpassed national capital New Delhi at least twice with AQI hovering over 300, raising worries of residents. The Air Quality Index from 0 to 100 is considered as good. 100 to 200 is moderate, from 200 to 300 it is poor, and 300 to 400 it is very poor, and from 400 to 500 or above it is considered as severe. The poor air has been attributed to stagnant winds and dropping mercury by authorities, while environmentalists have blamed it on infrastructure expansion. The सब जगह प्रॉब्लम है क्या तकलीफ है क्या होता है दिक्कत क्या होती है ब्रीथिंग प्रॉब्लम है और सांस लेने में प्रॉब्लम होता है मीनवाइल न्यू दिल्ली रिमेंड श्राउडेड इन स्मॉग ऑन मंडे एस कूलर वेदर एक्सेसिबेटेड द पोल्यूशन वोस फॉर इट्स 20 मिलियन पीपल द ओवरऑल एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स इन दिल्ली वाज रिकॉर्डेड एट 301 रेजिडेंट्स ऑफ न्यू दिल्ली एंड इट्स सबर्बन एरियाज एंडियोर पुअर एयर एवरी विंटर एस कोल्डर हेवियर एयर ट्रैप्स कंस्ट्रक्शन डस्ट vehicle emissions and smoke from the burning of crop stubble in the nearby farming states. 
And moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Monday termed the Chaman incident as unfortunate in which at least six Pakistani civilians and one Afghan soldier were killed in a cross-border clash. The Pakistan army has claimed the clash happened after Afghan border forces opened unprovoked and indiscriminate fire of heavy weapons onto the civilian population at the Chaman border crossing. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Monday termed the deadly cross-border clashes in Chaman as unfortunate, in which at least six Pakistani civilians and one Afghan soldier were killed, and asked Afghanistan's interim government to ensure that such incidents are not repeated. A Pakistan army statement said the Pakistani troops retaliated after Afghan border forces resorted to unprovoked and indiscriminate gunfire and artillery shelling onto the civilian population at the Chaman border crossing which links Balochistan province with Afghanistan's Kandahar province. The Afghan side blamed the clash started after Pakistani forces demanded that Afghan forces stop building a new check post on their side of the border, according to reports. Pakistan's foreign ministry spokesperson Mumtaz Zahra Baloch in a statement said that such unfortunate incidents were not in keeping with the brotherly ties between the two countries. The statement added that the concerned authorities of both countries should remain in contact to ensure that there is no further escalation of the situation and a recurrence is avoided. The busy Afghan border crossing at Chaman, used for trade and transit, was closed for some hours before reopening. The crossing was closed for several days last month after similar clashes. Well, more news from Pakistan. Opposition PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan on Sunday lashed out at PM Shehbaz Sharif-led government over the possibility of Pakistan defaulting on its loans. Terming the ruling coalition as Gang of Thieves, Khan said they don't care if the country defaults. Former Prime Minister and Opposition PTI Chairman Imran Khan on Sunday lashed out at the ruling coalition government over possibility of Pakistan defaulting on its loans. Khan terming PM Shehbaz Sharif-led government as Gang of Thieves said it will not damage the interest of the gang if the country defaults. Attacking the Sharif family, Khan said the gang has been stealing national wealth for the past 30 years. People came to know about Sharif family was laundering the looted money when the Hudabia paper mills case surfaced, he added. The former Premier claimed the default risk has risen to 100% as local investors don't trust the incumbent government. He warned if country defaults, US dollar will also shoot up, making it hard for any foreign investment. अगर हमारा रुपया गिरेगा तो इनका तो डॉलर में पैसा पड़ा हुआ है इनको तो फायदा है इसलिए उनको कोई फिक्र नहीं है जिधर पाकिस्तान जा रहा है मीनवाइल पीटीआई सीनियर लीडर एंड इमरान खान क्लोज एड फवाद चौधरी हैज गिवन अ डेडलाइन टू रूलिंग कोलेशन पाकिस्तान डेमोक्रेटिक मूवमेंट पीडीएम टू अनाउंस इलेक्शंस इन अ ट्वीट चौधरी सेड इफ पीडीएम डजंट अनाउंस इलेक्शंस बाय डिसेंबर 20 पीटीआई विल डिसॉल्व द असेंबलीज ऑफ पंजाब एंड खैबर पख्तूनख्वा Imran Khan, during a rally in Rawalpindi in November, had announced the dissolution of assemblies in Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa if the government refuses to hold general elections at an early date. The ruling coalition has rejected the demand, saying the polls will be held as scheduled later next year. And the United States Special Envoy for Afghanistan has said that Washington will place the issue of human rights at the center of its engagement with the Islamic Emirate and all Afghans. West has said that the space for free expression has shrunken for vital media and the citizens. The United States Special Representative for Afghanistan, Thomas West, said on Sunday that Washington will place the issue of human rights at the center of its engagement with the Taliban and all Afghans. West said on Twitter that Afghan women and girls face restrictions in various sectors such as education, employment and movement and political life. He added that the space for free expression has shrunken for vital media and citizens. Meanwhile, the U.S. Special Envoy for Women, Girls and Human Rights in Afghanistan Rina Miri said on Twitter that the U.S. stands with the brave human rights defenders who are valiantly defending these rights in increasingly difficult conditions. 
Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid has said that they should base their relations with the Afghan people and the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan on the basis of international norms. The Taliban took over Afghanistan in August 2021 and has imposed policies severely restricting basic rights, particularly those of women and girls. The Taliban have dismissed all women from their leadership posts in the civil service and prohibited girls from attending secondary school. And a news from Bangladesh, a day after the mass anti-government rally of Bangladesh National Party BNP, all seven lawmakers of the opposition party submitted their resignation. BNP has blamed Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina of electoral malpractices and rise in cost of living and has demanded her resignation to pave way for a caretaker government till next elections. A day after the mass anti-government rally of Bangladesh National Party BNP, all seven parliamentarians of the opposition party submitted their resignations on Sunday. The resignations of all lawmakers except two has been accepted by the speaker, local media reported. The move to resign was announced during the December 10 rally, where BNP called Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government as illegal. Thousands of demonstrators who were mainly supporters of BNP rallied in Gopal Bagh, demanding Hasina's resignation. The supporters blamed the Prime Minister for soaring fuel prices and rising cost of living and demanded she step down to pave way for new elections under a caretaker government. The rally was the last in a series of anti-government demonstrations which BNP had announced in September against the Awami League government. <laughs> Before the rally, BNP headquarters in Naya Paltan area of Dhaka also witnessed a violent clash between BNP party workers and police, leading to death of one person. In crackdown that followed, police arrested around 400 party workers, including top leaders Mirza Fakhrul and Mirza Abbas. BNP has demanded its cadres to be released and has announced fresh demonstrations against the clashes. And Comic-Con, the biggest pop culture carnival in the subcontinent, was held over the past weekend in New Delhi, featuring comic book artists, cosplay competitions and gaming. The event saw a large number of people turning up who assumed their favourite fictional characters, both in spirit as well as in look and action. Take a look. Thousands of excited comics and anime fans flocked to New Delhi edition of the Comic Con over the past weekend as the event was held after a two-year hiatus due to coronavirus pandemic. The event provides an opportunity to fans to dress up in their favorite superhero or comic book characters, play a few video games and explore the latest comics and films. Cosplayers, costumed role players, dressed as their favorite characters like Thor, Batman, Scarlet Witch, Templar Knight and Joker among others and posed for photographs. I mostly every year. It's a good time to get together with friends. I cosplayers to meet new cosplayers. I appreciate your costume. So it's like you have almost a superstar feeling. I'm feeling really amazed right now because it's been some time since I've been in such a huge gathering and it's an amazing place to be. It's Comic Con. And it's my first year, first time and first year here. Comic Con got its start as a convention for comic book lovers who would come together to trade magazines, talk comics, explore science fiction and even dress as their favourite superheroes. With the rise of comic book films in the 1990s, Hollywood began showing up. The three-day event in New Delhi concluded on Sunday. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.